Yeah, great stuff as always. Uh, Kyle Provides, Matty Vets, appreciate you guys. We will be back next week to break down that full card uh, at UFC 304. But without further ado, let's continue this special edition of the Vet US UFC show. He is the Baltic Gladiator, Modeskis Pukalistis. Thank you so much for joining us here on BetUS in advance of your big showdown next week in the light heavyweight division at UFC 304. Modeskis, I always like to get a gauge of fighters uh, when you get about a week out. How are you feeling physically, emotionally? Is everything where you want it to be? First thing, I'd just like to say thank you so much for having me on the show, mate. I really appreciate it. And it's really good uh, meeting you in person or over, uh, over virtual chat. Um, Absolutely. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling the best I've ever felt. My dad keeps telling me, you know, uh, as he's training me, as he's torturing me in the, uh, in, in the shack, in the, in, the, in the garden, doing our strength and conditioning, um, you know, he's telling me that this is the best I've ever looked. You know, this is the calmest he's ever been and, and stuff like this. And I feel like, the extra time away from the cage has actually been beneficial for me. My, my training partners have said this to me. Um, you know, even even my really close friend and training partner, Will Curry, has been saying that to me. He says, Do you know what? This is this is definitely divine intervention, a blessing in disguise, because the amount I've managed to le level up in these last couple of months, I'm, I'm really looking forward to show it uh, next week. Well, Modestus, it's reflected in the betting numbers. You are the favorite uh, against Marcy and Prakniel next week at about minus $1.55. I don't know if you pay attention to those sort of things. We do, obviously, here at BetUS. But I guess it's got to make you feel good that even in the eyes of people that just look at the numbers say, yeah, the best version of Modestus is going to be too much for the best version of Prakniel. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's definitely nice to hear. It's very comforting to know that, you know, uh, people appreciate my skill set. But I'm not going to lie, you know, even and I know topology doesn't mean anything like, you know, what I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, here or there. One one minute you're on one ranking, the next minute you're on another ranking. But, you know, like they dropped me like literally from 32 to like 47 within the space oh. of a week leading up to this fight. And I'm just like, is that how you view me? I'm like, OK, cool. Listen, at the end of the day, everyone's got their own opinions. Everyone's got their own, you know, their own thoughts about everything. So it's up to me to go out there and show them and prove everyone wrong. So I like that because that gives me an extra fire in my belly. You know, uh, although the betting line obviously says that I'm a favorite, you know, I'll go in, in there every single time with an underdog mentality because I actually do have a lot of people to prove wrong and uh, actually a lot of people to prove right. The people who believe in my skill set, who know what I can do, uh, so, yeah, ultimately, I just want to go in there and show the best of myself. I love it, Modestus, because, you know, I've been around fighters in the game for a long time, and you normally like to, like, like to find that mental edge, whatever it is that keeps you sharp. So I love that uh, underdog mentality, no matter what the betting lines say. We did have some questions come in, and one just came in and asked, what do you think you're going to see from Marcin? Do you look at, at tape of your opponent and say, this is what he likes to do, or do you say, hey, what I do is going to be too much for whatever he tries to bring at me? It's a bit of both, really. It's a bit of both. And and like I say, since November, uh, since my last fight in Brazil, uh, I've made a lot of adjustments, uh, not only in my personal life, but also, you know, inside the cage, you know, my training camp and, and, and stuff like this. I've added so many, so many things to my game and tried to really like hone in on particular skill sets. Um, you know, Marston's obviously a very experienced fighter. He's a very good mm -hmm. fighter. Uh, you know, he's had a lot of fights in the UFC. He's fought some really tough guys. You know, he's beaten Khalil Roundtree in, in, in the past, you know, probably before he started going on his uh, his little yeah. turn, his little, 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 little run. But at the same time, you know, he, he poses a lot of threats. You know, he's got that karate style. He's got that blitz style, um, mm -hmm. you know, heavy, heavy hands, really good low kicks. Um, we haven't really seen much of his grappling, but, you know, in the fights I have seen, he does manage to get back to his feet, you know, if given the opportunity. So, uh, you know, he's a well-rounded mixed martial artist. But ultimately, as I say, I feel like my skill sets are going to be too much for him when it comes to fight night. Uh, we always want to know this, and these are great questions coming in. And I always kid with fighters, like, I don't know how you guys, you men and women, do it. The way you guys can cut on fight, we can get down. What is your weight now? You don't have to tell us if you don't want us, but is it where you want it to be so it'll be a nice, easy, comfortable weight cut to get down to the final limit? Oh, it'll be very easy for me. I mean, I'm still, I'm still on the creatine, mate. I'm still on the, on the, on the pumped up look at the minute. Do you know what I mean? I've got all the water flowing into my system right now. So, you know, maybe that explains why I'm a little bit more heavy, like going into fight week. But strangely enough, I mean, even like looking at, like, you know, 
I mean, yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm a bit of a narcissist. I do like to look at myself every now and sure. then. But even, the, even when I'm looking at, like, you know, like, like pictures that me and my friends are taking after training, I'm like, bloody hell, like, I've gotten a lot leaner than, than, than what I Ooh. normally, than what I normally am, you know what I mean? So, Modesta's swimsuit edition is coming up very soon, people. Calendar coming to you. <laughs> Stay <laughs> but, tuned, uh, ladies. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so, I'm, a, I say a little bit heavy. I mean, I remember walking into the, uh, into the fight against Tyson Pedro on fight week. I was like, uh, 98 kilos, 99 kilos. So I was already like very light, um, mm -hmm. going in. And so I'm about a hundred right now. And I've actually been maintaining this weight throughout the whole camp. So I've actually not gone up too high, not, 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 I've any, and when I have gotten down under a little bit too much, I've always tried to up it a little bit. So I'm a hundred kilo and do you know what? I, I feel like this is, this is the best weight for me. And I feel like as soon as I get into weight cut mode, everything's just going to, you know, drip off me. So, uh, yeah, Love it's, it. it's all good. Uh, Modesto, I, I, like I always kid when I, when I talk to fighters, you know, before a big fight, I had Yoel Romero, Robert Whitaker, uh, back in my old studios in the day before UFC 225 and their championship bout. And, you know, Yoel is being Yoel and he's having fun with it. And, you know, putting me in headlocks and telling me exactly how the fight's going to go. And Robert's like, Hey, don't say a thing about the fight and strategy in front of them. Like, guys are wired differently how they approach fights. How do you approach it? Do you have a track plan for how you see the fight going? Or do you want to stay kind of open-minded and maybe adjust on the fly if you need to inside that octagon? Again, it's a bit of both. Uh, each fight presents its own particular uh, difficulties, uh, its own particular roadblocks that you need to navigate around. Uh, obviously, you're going into a fight with knowing what the fighters' tendencies are going to be. You're, mm -hmm. you're going into the fight knowing what they what their favorite things are, what they like to do. You know, you, you have to know these things because if that person turns up in the cage, then you're going to have a really good idea as what it is to that you need to do in order to, to overcome that particular style and their abilities. But however, you can go into the fight where they 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 come up a completely different animal like the Khalil fight for me. You know, what I mean, they come mm -hmm. a completely different person. They're fighting you completely differently to how you've been thinking about in your head. So I like to stay. 50% open-minded and then 50% I have a game plan as well because, you know, l like I say, if if you're going in there and they, they do exactly what you've been preparing for, then it, it just makes you even more confident. But then at the same time, if they do like to switch things up, you're also confident because, like I say, my own personal skill sets have, have leveled up also. So, uh, like I say, I'm just ready for whatever gets thrown at me. Love it. Uh, Modestus, we had another question come in, whether or not you think the fight might go all 15 minutes. I know you guys always look for finishes, want to have finishes. You mentioned that Pracnia might not be as adept as you if the fight hits the ground. We haven't really seen his wrestling. Do you think you'd have a distinct advantage if the fight did hit the ground? I definitely, look, as much as I think he's a great fighter, I believe I have an advantage everywhere. Ooh. You know, he, you know, everyone sees him as being, you know, the, the dominant striker. No one really, look, People know about my striking, but trust me, it's gone up on even another level. And like I say, I can't wait to show that. But yeah, wherever it goes, wherever I take him down, wherever I keep it on the feet, like I say, I have the upper hand. I have the advantage. And uh, yeah, I'll be looking to exploit that. At the end of the day, we're, we're, we're prize fighters. You know, we're gladiators. We're going in there. We're going in there to try and chop each other's heads off, you know, and then be respectful afterwards. But, you know, sure. at the end of the day... Where, where we're going in there with the primal primal instincts and, and, and abilities. And uh, like I say, I'm going in there to finish this guy. You know, that that is all that's on my head. You are the uh, Baltic gladiator. You're fighting in Manchester, uh, England on Saturday, next Saturday night. What's that crowd going to be like for you? Do you feed off the energy of the crowd or block it out and try to get almost into training mode of like, nope, I just hear me, my corner, my instructions, that's it. Do you know what? It's actually going to be nice where the crowd will probably be cheering for me as opposed to booing me. You know what I mean? Because like literally the last couple of the only the only exception I'll say is when I fought in Vegas against Zach Palgar, um, because my friend was literally just bigging me up to everyone. Like everyone was like, "Oh, who are you supporting?" And my friend was like, "Oh yeah, Modesto Bukowski. You got to cheer for him." And then I had like you know everyone in the uh, in the apex actually cheering for me, which was nice. Whereas you know I was in Australia and then Brazil, everyone's. Like, like boo, you know, ooh, vamo hair and this and that, you know what I mean? And so I think it'll be nice. Um I think it'll be nice having the crowd when they hear my entrance song play, like it's an old school English banger, like, you know, 
when that plays through those speakers, like anyone who's like sort of from my area are just going to have their heads banging like, oh shit, it's about to go down. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to see the energy and just sort of feed off the crowd, you know? Are you going to tell us what that song is or do we have to wait till next Saturday to hear it? Listen, we already know what it is, but uh, if, you've, if you've heard some of my uh, previous walkouts, listen, gigs talking the hardest, gigs talking the hardest. <laughs> Every, everyone already knows. Everyone knows. This is uh, this is the tune that gets me going, my man. I absolutely love it. Uh, Modesto, very quickly, and obviously we're going to talk about your fight next week here on the Bet UFC, uh, UFC 304 preview show. Uh, in, in your perfect world of worlds, how does the fight play out for you? You guys don't get paid by the minute. I know you'd like to get it out of there earlier than later, but how do you visualize the fight going? I visualize myself starting, uh, you know, starting very explosively, you know, um, starting and showing like, you know, sort of my, 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 my dangerous abilities. Um, look, at the end of the day, I want to finish him in between, in between those three rounds. You know what I mean? However long it takes, wherever the fight goes, however I see it play out, uh, ultimately, I'm looking to get him out of there. Um, you know what I mean? I'm coming out there uh, with ferocious intent. Um, and yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking to put him away, whether it is on the floor, whether it's from standing either way, I'm looking to get him out of there. Is there, uh, anybody in your division, uh, Modestus that you say after that, and I know you guys like to take care of what's in front of you, take care of your business on Saturday. Is there a fighter you just can't wait to say, if I get a call out, I'm calling this dude out because I want him next. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know what? It's funny. I, I have actually been thinking about that as well. And you know what? Like I want to. I want to beat really good guys. I want to like, you know, to, uh, work my way up the rankings and stuff like this. And, mm -hmm. and you know what, like, um, I was thinking about, you know, Kennedy Sachukwu and then yeah. next thing you know, you had, uh, Ovin St. Pru go, go out there and put on an amazing performance against him. So I ain't going to lie to you, uh, against a legend of the sport, a guy who's fought for the belt. Do you know what oh. I mean? A guy who's, who's a massive veteran. I would love to fight OSP you know, in as quickly as Abu Dhabi, you know, or in at the end of October. So that's that's my thought process. You know, I've got to get the job done on, uh, next Saturday. Got to go, go in there, put on an amazing performance, no injuries. Uh, but that's the fight I'd like. Oh, as Sean Shelby, Dana White, uh, Modesto has already done the work for you. So we'd love to see that fight against uh, Ovin St. Pru uh, after this Saturday. Uh, Baltic Gladiator, I love the nickname. How did you get it? And uh, do you like it when people use your nickname instead of your name if you see, him, see you out there in the streets? Uh, yeah, you know, I've actually had a couple of people like hollering out to me. Oh, the Baltic Gladiator. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Next thing you know, like everyone's looking like, what the hell? <laughs> Who is this guy? You know what I mean? So um, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, do you know what? It's funny. Uh, there's always a sticking point for a fighter, like thinking, what should my nickname be? Do you know what I mean? Because it's almost like a point where you just like sit in there and you're just thinking about it. Because some people, they get it naturally. Like it just comes through like kind of flowing. But yeah. with me, I've always been like, hmm, I don't know. Like what, what, what would actually stick with me? Do you know what I mean? And then um, I remember even I, I'd done it a couple of times on Instagram. I put on like a... Um, what should my nickname be? Like asking people like the question. And I've yeah. had all sorts. I've had the incinerator. <laughs> I've had, um, you know, the, uh, the, the something, the Slavic James Bond. Like I've had all sorts. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I've, 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 I've had everything ranging from one to the next. Do you know what I mean? But um, it came down to basically uh, someone said like the gladiator. And I thought, yep. you know what? That's really, cl that, that's re that's really cool. I like that. They actually said the Slavic... Uh, gladiator and i was like hold on a minute like i'm from the baltic states do you know what i mean so i'm more baltic than it is slavic right um and then uh i was like okay well hold on a minute let me put the two and two together and then next <laughs> thing you know someone uh, uh someone from lithuania actually made like a, a picture um like a really cool one actually of like one one of my very famous topless photos i've got many of those on my instagram <laughs> but uh anyways and and he did like a little like a little edit and then he put um the gladiator from the Baltic States. And I was like, that is it. Bam. Baltic gladiator. It's on. That is the one I'm, I'm sticking with it. And uh, yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> the, uh, the Slavic James, uh, James Bond did make me chuckle though. That is, that's a look. You, when you ask people are going to give you some really creative ones. I uh, tell the people, by the way, where they can find you, find you and follow you on social media. Yeah. So uh, it's at Baltic gladiator on, uh, on Twitter. It is, um, on TikTok, also Baltic Gladiator, okay. and then on 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 Instagram, it's 
I haven't been able to change it, but it's uh, at M O D Y B twenty four. I've just okay. kept it like that pretty much this whole time. And do you know what I mean? At, at the end of the day, if I can't change it, like if if you you know if ain't bro, don't fix this sort of thing. You know what I mean? Just keep rolling with it, Modestus. It's yeah. working for you so far, man. Hey, I gotta say, really appreciate you taking the time. I know how valuable your fight time is uh, before you get there next Saturday night. I'd wish you luck, but I know you don't need it next week. So, Modestus Bogowskis, thank you so much for joining us here on Bet US. You are the man, honestly. Thank you so much. I had a really good time. You're a great guy. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to speaking to you guys uh, in the future. Cannot wait. Everybody check it out. Like, subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. And give them a follow on social media. What a great follow at the Baltic Gladiator. We'll see you next week right back here on BetUSTV.com.